Heather Locklear, a popular actress, captivated audiences on Dynasty and Melrose Place. She had a turbulent existence following her famous divorce from rock guitarist Richie Sambora. Fans thought their marriage was perfect, but personal issues and public scrutiny ended it. Heather struggled with mental health and legal concerns after the divorce. Despite these challenges, she has shown great fortitude. Heather struggled to restore her life and career amid celebrity and emotional strife is a roller coaster. The contents of Heather Locklear's dating history reveal her resilience and the enormous influence her personal experiences have had on her life. We'll illuminate Heather Locklear's remarkable life and struggles. Young Sweet Love The beauty of Heather Locklear has never changed. Her large blue eyes, golden hair, and infectious grin set her apart from the rest of the class in high school. Her compassion to the late Farrah Fawcett was common. Chris Heiser, a little child, was one of her school pals. Their love was innocent, tender, and full of promise. However, as is sometimes the case with romantic relationships in high school, it all faded as they got older and took separate routes. It would be destiny that brought them back together decades later. But let's look at the other men who have won her heart over the years before we get into the specifics of Locklear and Heiser's relationship. Her one and only date with Tom Cruise. In a 2013 Chelsea Lately episode, Locklear clarified to Chelsea Handler that it wasn't technically a date. Nevertheless, it was just too absurd and humorous to miss. After meeting during an audition in the early 1980s, the two performers made plans to hang out together that evening. Tom's social circle in L.A. was small. He was thrilled to be seen out and about with such a beautiful celebrity as Locklear at the time. Locklear claims that when Cruz and she reached the dance floor that evening, he began showcasing some of his techniques from the movie Risky Business, in which he dances while wearing just his underpants. She remembered telling Handler, You just stand there and don't know what to do. Do you dance around him? The actress decided to sit down while Cruz carried out his duties. That concluded everything. After that date, none more were scheduled. Scott Bayo had a problem with commitment. When Scott Bayo first saw Locklear, he fell in love. The actor told people that Heather Locklear was the first female he had ever been in love with. She is the greatest chick in the world, and I just ruined it. The actor and Locklear had been competing on the Battle of the Network Stars set when they first met, and he fell in love with her. Unfortunately, he struggled to commit to the gorgeous blonde. Consequently, their relationship failed. Things for the Happy Days actor didn't get any better over time. Bayo has been embroiled in several infidelity scandals throughout the years and still struggles with faithfulness in his romantic relationships. Locklear's Fling with Mark Harmon Back in the day, one of Hollywood's most sought-after bachelorettes, Heather Locklear, and the second sexiest guy alive, Mark Harmon, had an affair. They probably would have formed a great pair if their relationship had lasted a little longer. The NCIS actor claims that his short relationship with Locklear ended by New Year's after it began somewhere around Christmas. Evidently, their love wasn't predestined, even though they seemed to be picture-perfect together. Their brief relationship implies that they most likely didn't have a close relationship after all. Tommy Lee was too shy to talk to Locklear. When Tommy Lee, the drummer for Motley Crue, first encountered Locklear, he wasn't as brazen. While hanging around backstage at a REO Speedwagon show in 1985, the two got to know one another. It was love at first sight for Lee when he met the well-known actress. I was so shy, I couldn't possibly have gone up to her myself, but it was Heather or Bust, he told People magazine explaining that he sought a mutual acquaintance to introduce them. Ultimately, Lee took a bit more work to persuade Locklear to go out with him, and Lee proposed after three months of serious dating. Locklear teased her hair to blend in. Lee and Locklear attended a concert at the Comedy Store and had a romantic meal at an Italian restaurant on their first date. Lee wore his typical rock star attire when he showed up to pick up his girlfriend. Heather thought she had to tease her hair a little to fit the part, so she did. She remembered, 
I came downstairs, saw Tommy, and ran back upstairs to get my hair wilder. For his part, Lee was already infatuated with Locklear. It was great. In an interview, he said, I think I lost part of my mind the first time I saw Heather. Lee wasn't sure Locklear's father would approve. It took a lot of effort, but the highly tattooed Motley Crew bad guy managed to win Locklear's parents over when they first met. At first, he was concerned about her parents' reaction to his body piercings and tattoos. Lee recalled the meeting by saying, I'm pulling earrings out, putting on a long sleeve shirt, and when he comes in, I'm sitting like a gentleman on the couch. Locklear's strict father may have seemed hard to win over initially, but after witnessing Lee's undying love for his daughter, he ultimately granted his approval. They believed their union would last a lifetime. The couple exchanged vows at the Santa Barbara Biltmore in front of 500 guests. At the event, Locklear, who was 24 years old, wore a lovely fishtail gown. Lee, 24, looked dapper in a white leather tuxedo. As they looked tenderly into one another's eyes, they believed their marriage would last forever. Soon after the wedding, Lee said, I think we'll be the coolest grandma and grandpa in the world in an interview with People magazine. We'll be in our 80s or 90s. Heather will still be stunning, and I will still be a rock pig. Trouble was lurking. The newlyweds made every effort to make their marriage work, but it was almost hard to coordinate their schedules because of Lee's insane Motley Crew tours and Locklear's regular acting engagements. In addition, Lee continued to party excessively and repeatedly cheated on his wife. When one of Lee's adulterous relationships was captured on tape, he was out of luck. That was Locklear's breaking point, and she promptly filed for divorce. She was never going to put up with a guy who was sleeping with adult film stars. Officially Divorced Locklear regrettably discovered that her marriage to Lee would not be her only one. The young actor experienced immense sadness. Time cures wounds, but it didn't help that the divorce was widely publicized in the media, with remarks like, she grew sick of the groupies, and it took her that long, seven years, to end a marriage that went bad on the honeymoon. Regardless of how their relationship ended, the two seemed to be on excellent terms. In 2016, Locklear shared an old picture of herself and Lee cuddling with the remark, Happy 30 years, baby, in honor of what would have been their 30th anniversary. From one rock star to another. Instead of giving her divorce from Lee some time to heal, Locklear threw herself into a new relationship with Richie Sambora, the guitarist for Bon Jovi. They were introduced by a mutual acquaintance in 1994, but the relationship only worked out after a period of time, most likely because they lived on different coasts. Notwithstanding the difficulties, the couple maintained their connection, and Heather married Sambora less than a year after divorcing Lee. Ava, their daughter, was born in 1997. Everything seemed to be going well for the family for a few years. Then Locklear abruptly filed for divorce in 2007. Incriminating Evidence Sambora was reportedly taken aback by the divorce. Locklear caught him totally off guard, but she had a motive for choosing to part ways with him. She was rumored to have discovered some unsettling data on Sambora's computer. She discovered that Sambora had received an offensive email from one of their common friends. The email's contents? A few explicit pictures. Sambora maintained that the images had no significance, but Locklear was not persuaded. People magazine was informed by a close source of the actress that she was absolutely devastated. She also lost a friend. Compared to her first divorce, Locklear lost a great deal more in her second one. She disagreed with Sambora, including her close friend Denise Richards at that time. Richards did not support her buddy throughout her divorce, but it came out. Instead, she was out at one of Sambora's gigs with him. It went beyond just spending time together at a performance. Eventually, the two hit it off and began dating. Richard said, you know, she wasn't my best friend, in defense of herself. In the last several years, she was a close friend. Despite what some people may say, I didn't know her for my whole life. They've managed to keep things together. 
For the sake of their little daughter, Ava, Locklear and Sambora have managed to maintain their unity despite their contentious divorce. Somehow, the couple has been able to put their differences aside and have even been together for several Christmas and Thanksgiving celebrations, which a lot of divorced parents don't do. The guitarist told people that he still has great respect for his ex-wife and that they're better friends now than ever before. Rock and roll is over. Locklear avoided that environment after marrying two rock stars and focused on her career when she began dating again. The actress, who was recently unmarried, quickly began dating actor David Spade. First and foremost, his amazing sense of humor drew her in, followed by his striking physical attributes. When TMZ questioned the celebrity about how Spade manages to hook up with so many women, she said, he has a big, <clears throat> yeah. Locklear and Spade seemed to have clicked, despite just dating for six months. She was nice to go out with me, and I will always be indebted to her because she was so nice, so fun, Spade stated in an interview with Radio Andy. Her off-screen romance with Jack Wagner. In the late 1990s, Wagner and Locklear first crossed paths on the set of Melrose Place. Despite acting as a married couple, they maintained their separation since they were preoccupied with their lives. Their on-screen relationship then went off-screen almost ten years later. Locklear soon revealed to people that their relationship was wonderful, exciting, and blossoming, despite the couple's assertions that they were merely close friends. In 2011, after four years together, Wagner proposed with a six-carat diamond ring. Engagement was ended. The pair ended their romance and called off their engagement in November of the same year. They concluded that continuing their marriage would not benefit their children. Wagner told TMZ that they decided to make the change after discovering how little time they had left to spend with their children due to the time commitment of wedding preparations. Furthermore, at that time, a mixed family consisting of Locklear's daughter and Wagner's son would be too upsetting. Engaged in a Violent Fight from the outside, there was no animosity between Wagner and Locklear as they terminated their relationship peacefully. However, it turned out not to be the case at all. The ex-couple got into a heated argument when Wagner went to Locklear's Sherman Oaks house to retrieve some of the things he had left there. They insulted each other's families, which led to a heated altercation, an unnamed insider told the Daily Mail. Jack rushed at Heather attempting to shove or grab her as she approached her vehicle. She swung in response. When the police came on the scene, the case was concluded without any charges being brought against Jack since she had hit him in the face with a right punch. An Overdose Scare Following their 2011 breakup, Wagner and Locklear's conduct became unpredictable. She was taken to a Thousand Oaks, California hospital two months after the engagement was called off. When her sister thought she could have overdosed on a combination of booze and prescription medicine, she phoned the police. Locklear's family withheld the fact that she had entered a treatment facility until after the couple's breakup, despite Wagner having allegedly begged her to go to rehab before their breakup. DUI, Depression, and Anxiety Over the years, Locklear has dealt with some really difficult moments. The Melrose Place star's decline started in the late 2000s, allegedly due to a 2008 phone conversation in which someone said the actress was suicidal. Shortly after, Locklear admitted herself to a medical facility in Arizona to get therapy for depression and anxiety. She was suspected of driving under the influence when she was pulled over and taken into custody by a highway patrol officer later that year. She hadn't been drinking, according to blood tests, but her prescribed medications may have compromised her ability to drive a motor vehicle safely. Hit and Run To cure her drug and alcohol problems, Locklear had to go through a 30-day inpatient treatment program. She also started abusing prescription pills. The star of Dynasty had a rough time. She struck a no-parking sign close to her house in 2010, and her response was to leave the area. Ultimately, she was taken into custody and given a minor hit-and-run ticket. Since the automobile was registered to both Locklear and her ex-husband Sambora, 
the authorities cannot establish who was driving it on that particular day and decided not to press charges. Brand New Boyfriend Locklear started dating computer entrepreneur Larry Porish after splitting up with Wagner. They met on a blind date. Porish was a welcome diversion from her famous ex-boyfriends, the busy actor Wagner, and the bad boy rock stars Lee and Sambora. Porish seemed to have put Locklear's turbulent past behind her. In 2013, the couple even became engaged. But despite Locklear's repeated claims that he was the one, their relationship quickly soured and they parted ways. Next, there was Manny. Dr. Mark Manny, a surgeon, was Locklear's second romantic partner. The couple started dating in 2013 and often went to hot spots together, seemingly deeply in love. Locklear made very few remarks about her new spouse and maintained the privacy of her new relationship. However, Manny was used to being in the limelight. Although he wasn't a well-known rock star or actor in Hollywood, he was one of the best cosmetic surgeons in the nation. The Harvard graduate was chosen as the best qualified plastic surgeon in 2008, and a year before, Forbes magazine listed him as one of the country's 10 leading providers for cosmetic surgery. Although they had a terrific appearance together, their relationship ended in 2016, three years later. Former Partner Chris Heiser is the newest beau of Locklear. Do you think it sounds familiar to you? Do you recall the actress we mentioned as our high school sweetheart at the beginning of this piece? He is that. 2018 saw the return of the couple who had been split up for 40 years. A year after reuniting, Locklear displayed a massive diamond ring on her left finger, declaring she was engaged to her favorite person. A source close to the celebrity said, After all the fame, she found her way back to a simpler life with the boy she dated in high school. Shortly after she celebrated one year of sobriety, she got engaged. Looks like the actress is finally going to find some clarity and calm after a turbulent ten years. Beautiful Comeback Locklear shared a picture of herself and her ex-boyfriend, Jack Wagner, at what seemed like a beauty shop on Instagram in 2019. They both seemed to be having a good time, with their hair covered in foil. Over the picture, Locklear commented, Look who I ran into. Whatever miscommunication they may have had is obviously behind them now. So much fun catching up with one of my favorite people in the world. We're still trying to look our best. Love you, at Heather Locklear, hashtag recovery, hashtag grateful, hashtag TY God, Wagner said with a photo when he uploaded it to his Instagram account. Prominent Profession Although Locklear has experienced many difficult times, she has also had many happy moments. Her career has been lengthy and successful, spanning several decades, and she has appeared in popular television series such as Spin City and Melrose Place. Locklear received great praise for portraying the ambitious Amanda Woodward in Melrose Place, which elevated her to one of Hollywood's most promising actresses. She was also an incredible Caitlin Moore in Spin City, where she co-starred with Charlie Sheen and Michael J. Fox. Career Breakthrough Her life was forever altered when Locklear was cast in her first soap opera. She joined the cast of Dynasty in 1981 during its second season, playing the role of Sammy Jo Dean Carrington. Her flawless appearance and endearing smile won her fans over and catapulted her into stardom. Producer Aaron Spelling, who produced the show then, cast Locklear for her breakthrough role. She continued to play Sam Joe until Dynasty concluded in 1989. The show's sixth season saw Locklear promoted to a full-time cast member. She works super hard. Not only is Locklear attractive, but she's also a talented actress who has worked hard to reach her current position. In her early career, Locklear made headlines when she became one of the few actors to work on two TV shows simultaneously. From 1981 to 1982, she starred in the police drama series T.J. Hooker in addition to Dynasty. Only three other actors have achieved this distinction, Niecy Nash, John Hamm, and Lisa Kudrow. She was nominated. Her remarkable performance in Spin City and Melrose Place earned Locklear nominations for numerous awards. 
In 1994, she was nominated for the first time for Best Performance in a TV Series for her work in Melrose Place, a significant milestone that coincided with her winning the role of Amanda Woodward in the show. Locklear received six nominations for the same category at the Golden Globes between 1994 and 2002. Although she did not win, it is still an amazing and commendable accomplishment. Her Awards Locklear's first nomination came from her role as Abby Arcane in the 1989 superhero movie The Return of Swamp Thing. This nomination wasn't as significant as the Golden Globe nominations she would later receive. It was a golden raspberry for Worst Actress. While this isn't the pinnacle of her career, the young actress did win the prize. The only other awards Locklear has won are this one and the First American in the Arts Award. Small Screen's Queen Locklear has starred in several films, including Scary Movie 5 and Wayne's World 2, but her success has undoubtedly been greater in television series. Her career took off after she appeared in Spin City and Melrose Place, and she received praise for her recurring role on the series Going Places. Despite her success in television, Locklear is still best known for her work in these shows. Her Native American Lineage Never let her stunning blonde hair fool you. Heather Locklear's father was a Native American. Her surname, Locklear, is a Tuscarora word meaning hold fast. Although it hasn't been proven beyond a reasonable doubt, there is evidence that some of her father's ancestors were members of the Tuscarora tribe. Today, many of the tribe's descendants can be found in North Carolina, New York, and Ontario. They are also known as the shirt-wearing people. She was a UCLA student for a short time. Before becoming the well-known Hollywood star she is today, Locklear went to college. After graduating from high school, she was accepted to UCLA, where she pledged Delta 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 and Chi Omega, but was never initiated into either sorority. She also participated in a variety of extracurricular activities while in school. At that point, Locklear started modeling and starring in commercials for Pepsi and Polaroid, which undoubtedly made the other girls in her immediate vicinity slightly envious. Dismissed by the Unit Though it's unclear if Locklear's rejection from the cheer squad was due to her lack of talent or if the other girls were just jealous, the young sweetheart turned her rejection around by finding her way to the drama club, where she was greeted with open arms because she loved acting and found it to be one of her favorite activities as a student. She made brief cameos. While Locklear is best known for her roles in popular sitcoms, she has also appeared as a guest on several other hit television shows. She was a guest star on Muppets Tonight in 1997, where she did a Muppets parody of Melrose Place. She also had a brief recurring role on Scrubs. In 2003, she made a cameo on Two and a Half Men, where she once again starred alongside Charlie Sheen, the ex-husband of her former friend, Denise Richards. Her Fear of a Car Crash Locklear wrecked her Porsche three feet into a ditch just outside of Los Angeles in September 2017, just before she entered sobriety. She was taken to the hospital and treated for minor injuries. Later, Locklear took to social media to reassure her fans that she was okay, writing, I'm home and good. I appreciate your concern. Authorities never said what caused the crash but they did say that neither drugs nor alcohol played a role in the incident. Locklear never commented on the terrifying event. Because of domestic violence, she was arrested. Shortly after her car accident in February 2018, Locklear was arrested at her Thousand Oaks home for domestic violence and battery of a police officer. She was also suspected of assaulting her boyfriend, who is now her fiancé, Chris Heiser. Locklear was reportedly inconsolable when police arrived at her home, yelling that she would shoot them if they ever came to her house again. The actress wasn't in her right mind when the deputies knocked on her door that day. Wild, Irrational, and Crazy Heiser told officers that Locklear had attacked him while he was on their bed, biting his face and being all over him for about 30 minutes while acting crazy, angry, and wild. 
During the investigation, Locklear also reportedly exhibited combative, belligerent, and aggressive behavior toward deputies. The reports from that night said that Deputy Aldridge saw that Heiser was bleeding from the bridge of his nose and he had redness on his chest. Rekindled Love Although Locklear's domestic abuse charges were ultimately dropped, she was still charged with four counts of misdemeanor battery on a police officer and one count of resisting or obstructing a police officer. The actress entered a not guilty plea to both counts, and we learned that she had been banned from possessing a handgun since the incident. Locklear has experienced some dark moments in her life, but having the cop show up at her door and accuse her of domestic abuse would probably take the cake. Thankfully, Locklear appears to have moved past those problems and is doing much better now that she is out of the spotlight. She has Ava to rely on. When Ava was in college, she experienced crippling panic attacks. The model told people, I struggle with anxiety, but about a year ago, it was very debilitating, and when I would have anxiety attacks, she would drive over and visit me. She would stop what she was doing and come to comfort me. Locklear and Richie Sambora welcomed their daughter, Ava Sambora, in October 1997. Ava has been there for her mother through her good and bad days, supporting and helping her overcome her struggles. The same is true for Locklear. The Value of Being Kind Ava told people that her mother never judged her as she dealt with anxiety and has always been by her side, helping her heal. Ava also said that she learned the importance of being kind to everyone from how her mother treated her. In addition to helping her daughter deal with her mental health struggles, Locklear also instilled important life values in her daughter. Fans are rooting for her. Locklear has experienced a lot in her life, including DUIs, rehabs, and domestic abuse cases. Fortunately, her fans and family have always supported her. Her fans have offered encouragement and advice on social media, telling her to take it easy and take good care of yourself while she works through her problems. When Locklear crashed her car in 2017, fans were relieved to hear she was okay. One fan wrote, Watch a bunch of funny shows under her Instagram photo. The positions she rejected. In 2002, Locklear turned down an offer to play a recurring role on Good Morning Miami, which was very similar to her Spin City character, and ultimately went to Ashley Williams. Locklear also appeared in shows like Scrubs and Ally McBeal during this time. At the height of her career, Locklear was one of the most popular stars in the world and a highly sought-after actress in Hollywood. Increased Achievement Locklear has starred in three Lifetime original movies to date. Angels Fall, based on the Nora Roberts book of the same name, was the most watched Lifetime movie of 2007, drawing in almost 5 million viewers. He Loves Me, which came in third, was well received by critics who also praised Locklear's acting. And Flirting with 40, a comedy drama from 2008, was rated as one of the network's three biggest films of all time. Lately. Regretfully, Locklear's past few years have been extremely troubling. Her downfall started in 2006 when she was arrested for DUI after splitting from her ex husband, Richie Sambora. The next 10 years were filled with numerous arrests for domestic abuse and battery of a police officer, as well as multiple stays in treatment facilities. Following her 20 rehab visits, Heather returned to heavy drinking and her family is said to be very worried and helpless, especially since she has lost an alarming 40 pounds as a result of her abuse of the popular diabetes medication Ozempic. Unsettling images have recently surfaced, showing Locklear acting strangely in public, talking to herself outside, and precariously balancing on a ledge. Hopefully, Heather will soon manage and navigate this challenge. If you've watched the video till here, that means you've enjoyed the video. Subscribe. Don't forget to turn on the notifications bell icon.